Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Sports Scene. My weekend has been great, and I'm sure, Lawrence, you must have had a great weekend as well. You went for the walk, didn't you? Yeah, I've been walking uh, every Saturday mornings um, and um, just making sure that I keep fit and healthy. Um, but uh, also for, for my family, we're actually um, going to be hosting a netball tournament later on uh, next month. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, um, you know. The I'm, Queen's birthday tournament. Please, I need you to come out to Hula. Bring, bring the yes, crew I should. out. I should. And um, yeah, we should be able to have a good time. But yeah. you had some fish at Gary? Yes, they, volleyball and fish. They say gyre fish, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, I had fish at gyre. I know I said last week that I was going to come you out and join you. You said you were going to walk. You yeah, said that. but I yeah. had to choose between the walk at Tala Beach and volleyball yeah. and fish at gyre. Obviously. And obviously I went yeah. for the better one. Oh. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> okay. But on a serious, um, going on to a serious topic. Yeah. Vaccination for mm. the Digital Cup players. Mm. Um, I have my reservations about that. Mm. Um, I know it's a choice to, yeah. you know, get uh, vaccinated. Yeah. Um, but Digital Cup has made it mandatory that yeah. the players who wish to stay in competition, yeah. they need to be vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just to get it clear, the government has said that you can vaccinate, volunteer vaccinate. Um, now, yeah. the PNG and RLC have said if we need this competition to go, um, to, to, to stop the spread of coronavirus, yeah. we want all our players yeah. to get vaccinated. Now, um, the choice is if you don't want to take the vaccine, then you won't play yeah. for, for this season anyway. That's right. You'll, you'll sit it out. So um, while it's voluntary, uh, PNG and RLC, because yeah. um, that's a recommendation from the controller's office as well. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I see where they're coming from. Yeah. It's a contact sport. Yeah. And COVID-19 is mm. spread through contact. Yeah. So... Yeah. This is this is where they're coming from, and I mean the other it's option. It's a choice that I think a lot of these players will have to really look into mm. and decide what's best best for them. The other option is to go into a bubble, oh, and yes. all of them will yeah. be um, housed and stay together for six months, and that will cost yeah. quite Hefty. a bit of money. Yeah, so that's going to be expensive. Mm. All right, so we'll we'll see how all of that pans mm. out. I'm sure by next week we'll see some developments yep. there, um, but. Tonight on the show, mm. we have Rugby League, that's SVPNG Hunters, Matthew Church, the coach, joining us again. And we have some Gaire Volleyball, that's <laughs> the cover, Kisere Amateur Volleyball Association. We have some volleyball as well in this mm. episode. Lawrence, let's get on with the <laughs> scoreline before we get to that. All right, no worries. Um, let's have a look at the scoreline for last week. If you missed it, it was the Magic Round in Brisbane. Round 10, and this is how it all went down. West Tigers uh, absolutely uh, annihilated Knights, 36-18. Uh, Manly, wow, all right. Um, too strong against uh, the Brisbane Broncos, 50 points to six. Canberra Raiders with only 12 men uh, defeated the Bulldogs, 2018. I'm really sorry about that, Jordan. Um, South Sydney Rabbitohs, 32 over the Sharks, 22. They led very comfort comfortably. Um, Sharks came back, um, but uh, you know I got to say uh, a big, big, big hand to, to the Sharks. They're, they're going really, uh, really poorly at the moment. Sydney Roosters 30 over the Cowboys 16 with about 15 to uh, with about 15 minutes to go. It was still in the in the in the in the game. Okay, the Eels 34 over the Warriors 18. Melbourne Storm. I mean these guys they just keep winning. 44 points to 18 and talk about winning. 10 in a row. Um, Penrith Panthers, 48 They're over just the on Tigers. a roll. Mate, Penrith, like, just, these guys, I mean, I don't know if they'll ever lose, but, you know, um, they're obviously a, a team to beat. Here we go. The Intrust Super Cup. Bears, 34. The Jets, 12. Seagulls, 18 uh, against the Northern Pride, 18. It was a draw. Devils, 24-16 against the Capris. The Blackhawks, 24. Mackay Cutters, 18. All right, just... Uh, the last of the results of the uh, Interest uh, Super Cup round number seven. Here it is. Winner Manly Seagulls, 38 against uh, the Falcons. Good win there, 38-24. Uh, uh, Dolphins, 14 against the Tigers, 12. Closed game there. And the South Logan Magpies, yeah, big winners over the 40, uh, over, over our Hunters, 48-14. Now this is how it looks in the in the letter. Uh, the top seven there, Dolphins in, in number seven, Winner Manly Seagulls. Um, they're at the top there. And um, if you flip over the page, uh, on 11, all right, they're on six points. It is a massive, massive hill our hunters need to climb. Uh, they play uh, the Redcliffe Dolphins, and we'll, we'll discuss all that 
uh, in the last segment it is a split round and that sort of thing so yep um, yeah interest uh, super cup there our hunters on, on 11 spot Dini. all right speaking of the hunters the coach Matthew Church will be joining us right after the break stay with us All right, good night, Papua New Guinea. Welcome back to Sports Scene. You are now uh, into the uh, Zoom session, as we um, always do every every week, and talk to the head coach of the SP PNG Hunters, uh, Matthew Church, which he, which he is online um, again tonight. Um, coach, um, a very big good evening to you. Um, another tough day uh, in the office. Um, how you been? Oh, I'm I'm going well. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, thanks for having me on once again. Yeah. We learned a bit of a lesson in the back end of that game against us on the weekend, and um, yeah, while challenging times, we know that we're going to learn and get better from that that experience. Yeah, absolutely, um, challenging times. I mean, it was not only until probably the last 20-25 uh, minutes where it just sort of uh, slipped away. A bit of um, experience, uh, of course, by the South Logan Magpies. I mean, having someone like Carmichael Hunt, um, um, who's been around the game for for quite a Quite a while now, and then you, you add in um, Albert and um, um, Tom Dearden. Um, I must say, though, um, it seems as though you know um, if these guys have a good game against the PNG Hunters, uh, the following week they get put into the um, to the Brisbane squad. Yeah, we saw that over the last couple of weeks against uh, East Tigers. Riley Jackson, uh, Dean Aramaya got promoted to the Storm mm. uh, run on. Mm. So I'd say, and the same again this week, it seems, uh, yeah, guys, we're obviously coming up against NRL experience, guys, but that highlights, I guess, the difference of where we're coming from. Yeah. Um, ten, 10 of our our squad are, um, or 11 of our squad are new to the Hunters. Mm. Um, 10 of those guys are 22 mm. or younger. Um, and that experience is just um, what's been on show. Yeah, we competed hard for, I think, Jakarti scored in the 54th minute, so we competed hard to that point. And then, yeah, it was just, uh, it was a little bit more one-way traffic after that. Mm. I guess the pleasing thing from a coach's perspective was, I think they scored four tries and um, consecutively, and they were all from kicks. They weren't from, um, yeah. you know, getting broken up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, just that little bit of experience we got beaten on. Yeah, defensively, I mean, i got to say there was a heap of... Um... Um, tries uh, that were saved on, uh, I think it was Norman Brown, um, and our debutant uh, winger there in the first half. Man, I think they saved um, two or three. But I wanted to also touch on, and we've done this over the over the last couple of weeks. But Jokadi Bire, I mean, this guy, he, he's going good. Yeah, he's uh, he's having a good season. Uh, there's some certainly some things I'd still like to him him to improve on, uh, but he's an explosive center. Uh, he's you know not overly tall, but yeah, there's, he's certainly well well muscled, uh, mm. and with that comes power. He's, yeah, he's showing that he's you know skittling guys out of the way. But it's and as a team, we need to get him into one on one situations so we can make that benefit him and the team as well. We were talking about um, just the NRL players and you know those that are playing um, to get match fitness um, in the in their feeder clubs. I mean, this must be. Um, a really good learning curve and, and, and something you need to learn quickly for the players and uh, adapt because um, we want to win, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, we all want to win. We, we, we wouldn't put ourselves in this environment if we didn't want to win. So, um, yeah, as I said before, we, on the weekend, um, you know, we basically had to pick the 17 that were available. There was no one else available that we could have put into the side due to injuries and suspensions, which makes that extremely tough. Uh, but that's what we're faced with, and we're not going to use that as an excuse. And, yes, we competed hard for 54 minutes, and yeah, the back end of that game sort of showed out with the experience. You know, Carmichael Hunt, plus then you've got five other guys who are um, NRL contracted to the Broncos. Uh, and we've seen two of those. Who, one's going to get his debut this weekend, and Kobe Hetherington and, and Albert Kelly is, uh, you know, experienced at NRL and Super League level, um, he's going to get his, his Broncos to, this weekend as well. So, yeah, we're coming up against uh, guys that have a, a you know, a fairly high football education, yeah. um, you know, through NRL systems and that. So, uh, yeah, we, it's it's hard to compete with those guys, but we're matching them for, for 55 minutes. We just need to do that for, for 80. 80 minutes. All right, so this weekend, um, it's a split round. Um, uh, a welcoming break, uh, we, I should say. say um, you're not playing till the till till the 29th uh, against the Red Cliff Dolphins. Um, 
how much of the team are you expecting back? Oh, look, we're we're um, Joe Joshua and Enoch Markey are, are coming back from injury this weekend. They're going to play some minutes um, with our feeder teams, so um, it'll be good for them to get some some game time under their belt. Obviously, they're both carrying knee injuries, and with those comes that little bit of confidence. So hopefully, they get through that unscathed, and and then um, they can be up for selection for the for the time that we. We come back against Redcliffe on the 29th. We also have three guys who uh, have sat out their suspension, so they'll all come back in Samuel Yeager, Benji Cott, and um, also Edwin Apape. So uh, those guys have been really, playing really well for the, uh, to start the season. And, yeah, we saw we're missing those guys. And, you know, we saw it two weeks ago with South Sydney. You know, they missed three or four players and they, you know, had 50 points put on them by Melbourne. So you don't need too many guys dropping out of your side before you can, uh, yeah, really... Um, come back to the pack or to the field. Yeah, and I, I guess, you know, for Edwin and uh, also Benji, um, these guys and Samuel, uh, I'm sure they would have been devastated um, missing out. So hopefully they've learned a, a value, very valuable lesson. Yeah, they certainly have. You know, all much was made of that game a bit around our discipline. And uh, yeah, you can read the comments on social media, but no one threw a punch. Um, you know, no one did anything untoward. They just were tackling hard and, and put themselves in poor technique. So they're, they're things that we're going to have to learn from. And they learn the hard way by getting suspended. And you put yourself in that category, and then you've got to, you know, you do the crime, you've got to do the time. So um, hopefully they've learned from that. And, that, and we still want them to obviously not go away from their aggressive um, tackling style and the, the intent in which they go in. We just need to zero, narrow our focus on on where that contact is happening and um, and just be a little bit smarter with that. Yep. All right. Well, this round is round eight, uh, a total of uh, 18, 19 rounds. So halfway through, what's, what's your gut feeling like, uh, Coach? Um, you reckon we'll uh, get it there, thereabouts? Oh, look, I guess um, putting that side together last year at the you know the back end of the year and putting the squad together, um, I kind of felt like we were never going to, and certainly with our preparation and doing the 31 days isolation, that's put a huge hamstring on, on our preparation. So um, I guess for me, it was not, not always that important about how we started. It was more going to be how we're going to finish and we wanted to finish strong. It's been a bit of a theme for us. So um I think the expectation after we won three of our first four games, um, we probably thought we were going a little bit better than what we were and we came back to the pack with those injuries and suspensions. So, yeah, it's time for us to reset. We'll get this this weekend out of the way and and start afresh next week and hopefully we come back with um, a lot of energy. I know that I will. I'll get away from from football over the weekend and just spend some time with the wife and and reset and um, and go again and recharge the batteries and I'll come back with energy. So, you know, it's been a challenge for me as well personally and, you know, sometimes the the mood of the coach or, you know, can affect the group. So I want to get away and and come back and just be full of energy and be really positive around the group because, yes, we've got a young side, but, um, you know, we've got some makings of of a really good side if we can keep everyone on the field. Um, so if we can do that and, and just keep getting better each week, then you know we should be f- focusing at the end of the year, no, at absolutely. the end of the year when the finals. No, absolutely, coach. Um, look, I think you're doing uh, a fantastic job. Um, you've really got a young young team on you, so um, you know I'm sure they'll they'll be raring to go um, against the Redcliffe Dolphins. Um, that's uh, next uh, next uh, next weekend, and um, that's out at Redcliffe, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it's Saturday. It's a, it's actually a night game at six pm. So um, the the Dolphin Stadium's just been. I'm not sure if you've seen much of the commentary around what's because they're putting in a bid team for the NRL. So they're not the, uh, they're not the Skyhawks, are they? No, 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 not the Firehawks. No, that's that's East. That's Brisbane East. They're putting a bid in. Uh, but yeah, the Redcliffe Dolphins are putting their own bid into the NRL, and they've just finished uh, at the end of last year. I think they finished their um, boutique stadium, and it. Um, it's probably not as big as NFS and capacity wise, but it's certainly a state of the art stadium. So the boys hopefully um, should um, enjoy that experience playing in a stadium once again. And hopefully we see a lot of uh, support from the PNG community. Yeah, no, I'm sure you'll re- receive a whole heap of uh, PNG one talks again, uh, coming out to support uh, the, uh, our beloved SP PNG hunters uh, coach. Uh, once again, thank you very much for chatting with us uh, here on MTV sports scene. And, um, Have a good break. Please pass our love to your family and um, we'll catch you next week uh, as we preview um, well the split round um, against the Dolphins. No worries, Lawrence. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Stay safe and see you next week.
you're watching Sports Scene. So, something a little bit different from what we've been covering in the last couple of weeks. We're out here at Gaira Village covering some amateur volleyball. Yes, that's something we haven't covered in the last couple of weeks. So, I'm here with the president um, and the vice president for um, Kisera Amateur Volleyball Association. That's um, Ricky and Mari, the vice president. So, thank you guys so much for joining me for this interview. Thank you, Anthony Sports News, on behalf of Gairo Kisera Amateur Volleyball Association, I would like to thank you people for being this kind guest of coming up to our village for the short interview. Firstly, short history on our volleyball. Uh, Kisera Amateur Volleyball Association has been down for nearly over 10 years. The last time we went into this sports was in 2012. So, after thinking about it for quite a while, we came into our existence and bring a revival volleyball here in Gairo Village. Tell me about the participation rate. How many people, or an estimate of how many people um, are out here right now taking on the competition? Um, and maybe just um, a brief of how far the reach is around um, the Gaira area. Since the interception of this sport seven weeks ago, the interest has been quite much. We have kids as young as 11 years old up to old as old as. 40 years old are joining the competition and we have over 300 participants with 12 clubs and 4 divisions, 2 for women and 2 for males. Now Mari, I'll give you this opportunity to talk a little bit about the kind of support you will need to continue with this competition. Uh, I would uh, ask all the business houses and uh, especially our governor and uh, member for Karuku Yuri, uh, we really need support in order to bring this game to another level. Our aim and our goal is to bring one team to Fairfax uh, or PNG Federation so that we can continue to uh, build our young ones. So far, what can you say about the social order in the village since um, they've taken on the sport of volleyball? Uh, so far, our village movement, uh, since the inception of the volleyball competition in our village, our, our, our village has been okay and the community has been participating so well and they are with us. Welcome back, you're watching Sports In, unfortunately, last segment, so we'll just leave it to Lawrence to mm. run through um, what's coming up this weekend. Yep, thanks, uh, Denny. Let's uh, have a look at the NRL, and uh, tonight, the first game, the Cowboys uh, take on the Knights. I'll tell you my tips as well. I'm, I'm saying the Cowboys uh, will, hear tonight, uh, will win tonight against uh, the Knights. Now, on Friday, uh, two games uh, will be played. The New Zealand Warriors will beat the West Tigers, that's what I'm saying, and the Sharks will uh, lose all right, against the Dragons. I'm going for the Dragons and the Warriors on Friday night. Saturday, Gold Coast Titans and the Bulldogs. This is a tough one, but I'll go for the Titans to beat the Dogs. Roosters and Broncos. Well, well, well. Would you believe that? Huh? Um, of course I'm going for the Broncos. Of course I'll go for the Broncos. But uh, I know, Denny, we'll talk about the results next week when we win. I mean, uh, Roosters will win, obviously, but we'll talk about it next week. <laughs> Raiders <laughs> and the Storm will round up um, our Saturday night games. I'm going for the Storm to beat the Raiders. Now on Sunday, two exciting games, South Sydney versus Penrith Panthers. Will the Panthers make it 11 in a row or will Pupsy Wayne Bennett and his troops uh, stop them? I think so. I really think South Sydney will do that. All right, and the Eels take on the Seagulls. I'm going for the Manly to beat uh, the Eels. Now, uh, split round of the Queensland Interest Super Cup round number eight. The Cutters play the Pride on Saturday the 22nd, which is this Saturday. And on Sunday, uh, Seagulls versus the Tigers, Capris versus the Magpies, and the Devils uh, take on the uh, Falcons. That's the uh, first part of round eight of the split round. Now next Saturday, uh, Bears take on the uh, Blackhawks. Dolphins will take on Redcliffe Dolphins against the Hunters. Massive game uh, for our boys to win in a brand new uh, Redcliffe Dolphin uh, stadium. 
And then the last game to end off the round eight of the split round is Wynnum, Manly Seagulls versus Ipswich Jets. All right, there you go. That is our, um, well, that is, that is the, the preview to the Rugby League. Okay. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, story tips. Yes, yes, story tips and comments. Please do send them in. Um, if you have story tips about any sporting activity, um, send them in with your full name and um, the sporting tips um, to sports at emtv.com.pg. That's the email address. Or you can call us on 312-9200. Um, leave your full name, the story tip, or, well, ask for me or Lawrence, mm. and we will assist you. Yep. Um, or you can inbox us on Facebook. That's our sporting page. And leave your story tip, contact details, and we will get right back to you. That's about it. Any more announcement before we go? No, um, hopefully, hopefully you join me on, on my walk, you know? Yes. Hopefully, one of these times, Saturday morning, but... Uh, I will. Yeah, hopefully. I will. Okay. I will not promise, but I will. <laughs> okay, this has been another episode of Sportsin. We will see you same time, same place next week. Bye for now. Good night.